Thank you for joining with us this evening, those in the auditorium and those watching live stream. Uh, let's take our songbooks and turn to page 437. Those in the auditorium, 437, and let's sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic as Brother Jared comes and leads us in singing. Let's stand together and sing these verses out this evening. And thank you for being here this evening, those watching live stream. And so let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you again for allowing us to come together this night. We just pray, dear God, your blessings upon the service and each and every one who is here tonight and those watching uh, via the internet. Bless and to thee be the glory in it all. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated and take your songbooks, turn to page 220, 220, Jesus is all the world to me. And let's sing these verses as Brother Jared comes and leads us in singing. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my home. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad to him I go, no other Makes me 
And thank you for being here once again, and we trust that God will just meet with us and uh, minister to each and every one of our hearts. We do want to mention that uh, we have a service Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We will be live streaming, and then uh, also uh, every um, Saturday morning, every Saturday morning at 1030, we meet together for uh, church-wide soul winning. We invite uh, you all to come and join with us as we divide into teams and we go and knock on doors and, and uh, look for uh, people who are open to listen uh, to the gospel presentation that we seek to uh, give them. Also, um, those choosing to help this local ch uh, church ministry through, um, through the, uh, donations and gifts are address appears on the screen now first baptist church 235 high street perth amboy new jersey 08861 attention financial secretary uh, we're going to have another song and then uh, we'll look into god's word this evening and so let's stand together turn in your songbooks to page 321 321 where he leads i'll follow then remain standing for the scripture reading and prayer right now page 321 where he leads i'll follow Sweet are the promises, kind is the word, dearer far than any message man ever heard. Poor was the mind of Christ, sinless I see, he the great example is in And remain standing and you may want to turn here in your Bibles we'll be looking at this verse uh, throughout the uh, message Joshua chapter 24 Joshua chapter 24 verse number 15 Joshua 24 uh, verse number 15 and the Bible says 
And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And let's pray. Lord, thank you for the scriptures. And Holy Spirit, please take the word and minister to each and every heart this evening. Fill me with thy spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. These are the words of Joshua. Uh, Joshua's final words uh, to his people were near the end, uh, basically, uh, of his life. And the Bible says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so here we have a statement made by Joshua, and he's now about 110 years old. He's an old man. He's seen a lot of things that had happened in his lifetime. He had seen the outcome of good choices, and he had seen the tragedy of bad choices. And now, in his old age, Joshua's giving one final exhortation to the people of God. And so he says in our text, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Now hear that statement again. He says to them, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. In other words, he's saying to the people that some of you serving the Lord seems to be an evil thing to you. See, it's an odd statement here, but I guess maybe you'd almost have to be a preacher to understand that statement because people look at you as if you're asking them to commit some horrible sin. When the preacher gets up and says, we need to give our lives totally to the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to live for him each and every day. He, his, he, he is to be Lord of our lives. He's to be the master of our lives. The preacher gets up there and, and people just think it's just vain talk, but that's what God desires of his people. Many people will uh, look at uh, a preacher or someone who says uh, something like that as, an, as if uh, he's asking them to do something evil. Is it an evil thing to ask God's people to put him first and to live for him and to put him above family, to put him above job, to put him above finances? Is that an evil thing? Well, it's not an evil thing, but people look at you like it is an evil thing. And so Joshua said, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, that is, if that is more than you're willing to do, if you think that's too much, if you think God is unreasonable for asking that of his children. He said, if you're not willing to serve God, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Now, we're talking tonight about the power of choice. We, we're all given opportunities to make decisions. God did not create robots, but he's given us the ability to choose. And the power of choice is a very wonderful thing that God has given to all of us, but let's understand that it also carries with it an awesome responsibility. God has made, again, every human being a free moral agent. God has given to each of us the ability to make choices, and we may choose to make the right choice, or we may choose to make the wrong choice, but 
though God has given us the power of choice. Let's be aware that every choice is followed by an outcome or a result. So after admonishing God's people, Joshua concludes with this exhortation using these famous words, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the truth is, every man needs to decide for his household that they're going to serve the Lord and that he's going to be the leader, the leader God would have him be to his wife and to his children and to lead them all by example. That's what God expects of the husband. But notice that Joshua said to God's people, choose you. Now, that's an individual choice. He said, choose you. And the older we get, the more choices we do have to make. Then he said, not only choose you, he said, choose you this day. There we see that he's talking about an immediate choice, not when it's convenient, not when we feel like it, or when we're done with the other things we're doing. No, he said, choose you this day. And then he said, choose you uh, this, this day. Uh, not, uh, that's talking about, again, today. The time is now. Many times we put choices off, choices that need to be made immediately. And when it comes to God's word, uh, we need to do what God would have us do uh, it's not something that we should put off and think about. If God says we're to do it, then we should do it. And we should do it now. We should do it today. It should be part of our everyday lives. Now also, I want you to notice that he did not say, choose you this day if ye will serve. Notice what he said. He said, choose you this day whom ye will serve. He uses the word whom. We don't get to decide if we serve, but we do get to decide whom we serve. You say, what do you mean? It, what it means is that uh, we're going to serve somebody, whether it be God or somebody else. We're going to serve somebody. We don't get to decide if we deserve if we serve. We do get to decide again whom uh, we serve. So if we do not serve God by choice, we will then serve the devil by default. You can't serve both. Jesus said uh, you cannot serve two masters. It's either one or the other. So if we choose not to serve God, then we're choosing the devil by default. Many people do not want the devil to run their lives. I don't think there's anybody here who would want the devil to run their lives. But the problem is, they don't want God to run their lives either. Now, God, again, is giving us a choice. And it's either one or the other. It's not like, well, I'll do both. It has to be one or the other. And how many people want to run their own lives? But the truth is, God will not force anyone to serve him. By the way, when we decide to do what we want to do, we're actually imitating the devil. In Isaiah chapter 14, in verses 14 or 12 to 14, Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, we're told about the fall of Lucifer. There's three archangels mentioned in the Bible. Uh, Gabriel and um, um, Michael, Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. And uh, those are the only three that are mentioned. But we know that uh, Lucifer uh, became the devil. Now, God did not create him the devil. According to Ezekiel chapter 28, God created Lucifer an anointed, beautiful cherub with musical ability. And I believe that's one of the reasons why the devil works so hard to exploit music in our society. 
This morning we re referred to uh, how the devil uses music to influence the minds of individuals. One of Satan's key ways to get people, especially young people, uh, to think wrong is through wrong music. And so we're told that Lucifer's heart was lifted up in pride. That's about like man. God gives us some ability. God gives us some talent and he blesses us. And then all of a sudden we think we're something. But what do we have that God did not give us in the first place? Anything we have that's good has come from God. James 1 verse 17, the Bible says, every good and perfect gift is from above. And so in Isaiah chapter 14, it tells us that uh, uh, about Lucifer's fall. And in these verses, we read that Lucifer said five times, I will. He said, I will be like the Most High. The name Most High is the name El Elyon. It means the highest high one. It means the strongest strong one. It means the one who has no equal or no rival. So what Lucifer was saying was, I'm going to be equal to the one who has no equal. I'm not going to be submissive to God. I'm going to be equal to God. Let's understand that which made a devil out of Lucifer is when Lucifer repeated or replaced the will of God for his own will. And that's what people do today. They replace God's will with their own will. And if replacing the will of God with our own will, uh, or let me say this, if replacing the will of God with his own will made, Lu made the devil out of Lucifer. What do you think it does to us when we replace the will of God with our will? We saw what it did to Lucifer. And it's impossible for any of us to have victory over the devil by replacing God's will with our will because we will be doing exactly what made a devil out of Lucifer. James 4, verse number 7, the Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, since one will not submit to God, he will not have the power to resist the devil. How do we get the power to resist the devil? we submit to God. And most people miss that. They think that they could resist the devil on their own, but we need to learn to submit to God. We need to submit our will to God's will. That's how we can resist the devil. So Joshua said, choose you this day whom ye will serve, not if. Again, we will serve God by choice or we'll, we'll serve the devil by default. We will serve one or the other. We cannot serve both. And that's why it's so important that we make uh, serious decisions when it comes to the things of God. That's our only hope. I said before, the Lord is our only hope for heaven and the Lord is our only hope for peace and victory in this life well, we're going through all these difficult times. I'm not just talking about 2020 and what's going on now, but even through the years of our lives previous uh, to 2020, we've all had to face difficulties and challenges and make choices. And so, I don't know about you, but I would rather serve a loving God than the one who is described in the Word of God as a destroyer, the one who wrecks and destroys everything in his path. Is that the one you want to choose to serve? Again, if we 
choose not to serve God, that's who we're choosing to serve. The prince of darkness instead of light. The prince of the power of the air. The Bible says who works in the children of disobedience. Is that the one you want to serve? If we choose not to serve God, then again we are serving the devil by default. Now, I don't want to be subservient to the devil, and I know you don't either. But the only way I can prevent that is by being subservient to God. I have to willingly put myself under the authority and the commands and the will of God in order to protect myself from the devil. That's why it's so important that we decide to serve the Lord Jesus and live for the Lord. We sing that song, I have decided to follow Jesus. That, that carries with it a, a, a lot of tremendous blessings when we decide to follow Jesus. And look at your own life, and I could look at my own life in previous years. When I decided to do my will, it never worked out. And I thank God that day I did God's will and I got saved. And now it's our, it should be our desire to do God's will in our lives. And that's the way we're going to, again, resist the devil. And so we're told, choose you this day whom ye will serve. And when he says that, he's telling us, that we have the power of choice. Again, God did not create robots. He's given us all the power of choice. And obviously, life is a series of choices. And the fact is, the quality of our life this evening is the outcome of our past choices. Isn't that right? What's going on in our lives right now what we're dealing with right now in our lives, whether it be good or whether it be bad, it's because of the outcome of past choices. But also, our future is going to be determined by the decisions and the choices we make today. I may not be able to go back and relive my past, and neither can you but I can make a good decision and a good choice today. So I don't have to have any regrets tomorrow. And that's why we have regrets, because of bad choices we've made that day or in the past. Now, uh, the only protection, again, against bad choices is making right choices, making good choices. That's the protection we have. Now, if I created a miserable existence for myself, the only way I can correct that is by beginning from this point on to make good choices that will bring a different outcome. Now, that ought to be an encouragement to everyone. You say, I'm paying for the wrong choices I made in the past. Yes, there's consequences. We may be paying for wrong choices we made in the past, but the good news is we can turn that around by now making right choices today. See, we can start fresh. We can't undo the past, but we can certainly take care of the future by making right choices today. And so whatever you've done in the past, that you regret and you're sorry for. Just, you know, make sure you're saved and then start walking with God, living for the Lord and getting God's will in your life and my life starting today. So we don't make any uh, choices that we will have to regret tomorrow. And so every human being has the awesome power of choice. And because of that, we get to decide where we're going to spend eternity, either in heaven with Jesus or in hell with the devil. That's our choice. 
God did not predestinate anybody, as some churches will try to tell you. God did not predestinate people for heaven and some to hell. That's not what the word predestinate means in the Bible. It means that those of us who are saved were predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And one day we will be like Jesus. But Going to heaven or going to hell is a choice up to the individual. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's whosoever. That means whoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, there's the choice. Revelation 22, verse number 17, the Bible says, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Anybody can take of the water of life freely. If they choose, that's our choice. And every time someone hears the gospel, they are choosing one way or another. Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse number 30, he that is not with me is against me. So with the Lord, there's no middle ground. You can't say, well, you know, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm serving God, but also I have to do what I believe I, I should do. And when we say that, and if it's contrary uh, to the will of God, we're wrong. And we're gonna pay consequences for that wrong choice. So whatever choices, again, we make, there are consequences with uh, that choice. And let me just put in right here that, you know, God has a will. And I think one part of God's will that we need to understand is his sovereign will. God has a sovereign will. That means whatever God decides that's going to be done is going to be done. That's God's sovereign will. You can't change it. I can't change it. But then there's not only God's sovereign will but also there's God's revealed will. And that's where we come in with our choices. God reveals his will for his people through his word. And there's, there's, uh, no, uh, uh, there's, there's uh, no way uh, we can do wrong if we choose to do God's revealed will. See, God's revealed will is not a feeling because it's given to us in the word of God. Here's what God says. He says, do this, or he says, do not do that. And that's God's, God's revealed will in the Bible. And then there's another will, I guess we could call it a non-moral will, where God gives us a choice to make, but in those choices, it's not right or wrong. It's something that we have to decide, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. That's why it's important that we walk with the Lord because there's some choices we have to make that are not given clearly uh, to us in the Word of God. That's God's revealed will. But uh, much of our, many of our choices are not uh, in God's revealed will. For instance, like, uh, should I take this job? Or, uh, or uh, should I marry this person? Now, there are guidelines given to us in the Word of God, but uh, God doesn't say in his word, in his revealed will, no, you should not marry that person unless it's something like that God's people are only to marry in the Lord. We're not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. We have that as a guideline. But let's suppose uh, uh, someone, bo both are believers and uh, uh, both... Uh, both seem to love each other and uh, well is it God's will that they get married well you're not going to find that in the word of God but uh, we certainly need to be in God's revealed will but then as we're walking with God God's Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us if we're walking with him and not only that God leads by providence sometimes he'll open the door miraculously or he'll close the door miraculously as long as we're walking with God. Uh, I remember what one preacher once said. 
uh, he said this, uh, God doesn't uh, stare a parked car. God doesn't stare a parked car. God's not going to show us uh, his will when it's not clearly given to us when we're not walking with him. When we're walking with him, he'll steer us right. He'll show us uh, right. And so uh, Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse number 30, he that is not with me is against me. So I'm just trying to say that with the Lord, there's no middle ground. No one has to make a statement of rejection in order to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. One either chooses to receive him or rejects him by not receiving him. If one does not receive Jesus Christ, he's automatically rejecting Jesus Christ. There's no in between. So we have the power to receive Jesus Christ or to reject Jesus Christ. God's given us that choice. I hope tonight everyone in the auditorium has made that right choice. If you have not yet made that choice, we want to help you to make that choice. I want to encourage you to make that choice. Forget about how good you are and all the good deeds that you've done. We were out soul winning yesterday, and uh, uh, I asked a, a woman on the street, uh, I, I figured, well, you know, a few people weren't home. There's someone live. Let me go after this woman. And I went after her, and uh, she told me how much she loves God. And I said, if you died, are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? And she said, oh, yes, I'm going to heaven. And I said, can you tell me how you know that? And she says, I help people. I go around helping people. I'm a very generous person. And I said to her, would you give me five minutes right now and show you what the Bible says about going to heaven when you die? And, uh, and, and she did and so on. But my point is that uh, people put their trust in other things and when they do, instead of the Lord, actually they're rejecting Jesus Christ. If you don't choose him, you're rejecting him. And so we have the power to receive him and we have the power to reject him. And then uh, there's something else when it comes to choices. You know God, uh, has given each and every one of us the power to choose our friends. You can choose your friends. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So understand that wisdom is being able to see things the way God sees them. Wisdom is seeing God's... Uh, seeing life through God's perspective. That's what wisdom is. So God says, if I choose friends who see things the way God sees them, those friends will help me to see it the way I'm supposed to see it. But if I choose a companion of fools, those who don't have any reverence for God, those uh, who live as if there is no God, like there is no heaven, like there is no hell, a companion of those kinds of people, the Bible says, shall be destroyed, not unwise, but destroyed. Hear Proverbs 13, 20 again. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So I'm not just wise or unwise, I'm either wise or destroyed. So I get to decide who my companions are. I get to decide whether I'm going to heaven or not. I get to decide who my friends are, but I don't get to decide how they affect me after I choose them. I may have the power of choice, but I don't have the power over the results of the choices I make. Again, it goes back to the results and the consequences. Yes, we have the power of choice, but we don't have the power as far as the consequences or the results of those choices. And everybody has peer pressure, every age. 
and I get to choose my peers and you get to choose your peers, but I don't get to choose how those peers affect me. Therefore, I need to choose those who will help me to be a better Christian. We're talking now about the awesome power of choice. God has given us that, that opportunity to make our own choices, but that doesn't mean then uh, that we could choose any way we want and be blessed by it because that's not true. Only the right choices will bring the blessings and the wrong choices will bring the cursings. And that's what life is all about. Then also, we have the power to decide whether we'll be in church or out of church. That's a choice. And there's people uh, who, uh, who say they love the Lord. They were here this morning. They're not here tonight. They chose not to be here tonight. Uh, uh, others choose not to be here on Wednesday night. And uh, you can make that choice. But remember, none of us will decide the results as, as to whether we're in church or not. We can choose whether we're going to be here, but we will not choose the consequences. And as God's people, God knows our hearts. And the Bible clearly says we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Hebrews 10 verse 25. It is God's will that in uh, every local church, Bible-believing church, that God's people who are part or feel part of that local church are to be there every time the doors are open. You say, well, I disagree. Well, that make your own choice. But remember, uh, uh, the right choice always brings blessings. The wrong choice will always bring cursings. And I'll show you that before we close. So the truth is, if we did not have the power of choice, it would be hard for us to show how much we love the Lord Jesus. That's why he gave us the power of choice. Because when we choose right, when we choose God, actually it's a demonstration of our love. And when we choose uh, uh, the wrong way, and we choose to go the other way than what God would have us choose, then we're showing that we really don't love the Lord. When God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he put one tree in the midst of the garden, and he told them that they couldn't eat of that tree, but if they did, in that day, they would surely die. Now, if God did not want Adam and Eve to sin, then why did he make sinning possible? He put that tree there. He gave them a, a, a command. He said that you're not to eat of, of this one tree. All the others you can, but not this one. Why did God put something forbidden in the garden if he did not want them to disobey him? Well, it's simple. God did that so that they would have to choose. They would have to choose either to obey God, and if they don't obey God, they're disobeying God. You see, God does not want me to choose to do right because doing right is the only choice available. God wants uh, me to make right choices even when wrong choices are available because that demonstrates my faith in him and his word. That demonstrates my love for him. God wants me to make right choices whenever wrong choices are even more popular. He wants me to make the right choice. God wants me to make right choices even when the wrong choice looks like uh, that it is going to uh, 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 not benefit me or, or it will not help me materially or financially. That's the way it may look. But God wants me to make the right choice even if it means losing out because doing the right choice and being in God's will and walking with God is far better than anything the devil will promise you because the devil, by the way, never keeps his promise. It always ends up quite opposite of what he tries to think, to help you to think uh, how it's really going to turn out. And so, 
God wants me to make right choices. Why? Because that's the way I can express my love to him. He wants me to choose him out of all the possible options in order to show my love to him. And so that brings us to the question, how much do we love the Lord Jesus? How much do we love the Lord Jesus? Think of that the next time we're, a choice is put before us. And if, if it seems advantageous to us to uh, choose the wrong choice because it's going to benefit us, that, and we choose that way, that just demonstrates that we really don't love the Lord the way we say we love the Lord. And so, let's also remember that with every choice we make, there's responsibility that comes along with that choice. There's consequences. There's results. God gave me the power of choice. He gave you the power of choice, but he also gave us the power to choose right. And if I choose to make the wrong decision, I'm accountable for that choice. And God will hold me accountable as his child for every choice I make, whether it be right or whether it be wrong. And again, I have the power to choose, but I do not have the power to dictate the outcome of the choices I make. And the truth is, every choice has a predetermined outcome. Again, whether it be a good choice or a bad choice. And so I want you to hear Deuteronomy chapter 11, beginning in verse 26 as we come to a close. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Here we're talking about where Moses came to the children of Israel with the law of God. And here's what he said to them. Deuteronomy 11, verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. And so, that's what I alluded to before in the message. Obedience brings blessing and disobedience brings a curse. Right choices bring blessings, wrong choices bring curses. So whether it be a blessing or a curse, that result is determined by the choice one makes. So God gave us the awesome, wonderful power of choice. He gave us the power of choice in order to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and to go to heaven when we die. He gave us the power of choice to be able to express our love to him by our obedience to his word. And he gave us the power of choice to choose to receive blessings instead of a curse. And some of us need to start making some right choices. I know in the past I've made several wrong choices and I reap the consequences of those bad choices. But I thank God that he has opened my, my eyes to what's right. That doesn't mean I'll always make right choices. But I do know that the right choices honors God and it brings blessings with it. And I don't have to make a wrong choice. And so some of us need to decide tonight from this day on I'm going to start making right choices. I'm going to uh, be in prayer with God. I'm going to be in his word. If I need to seek godly counsel, I will seek godly counsel. I want to make sure that every choice I make from now on is the right choice so I don't have to have any regrets tomorrow. So you may have regrets because of previous choices, but let that stop today. Let's decide from this day on, every choice we make, we're going to weigh it out, 
and we're going to make sure it's a choice that brings honor and glory to God and pleases Him. And so, first and foremost, the choice of salvation. If someone is not saved, the greatest choice they can make, even today, is to open the door of their heart and let Jesus in as their own personal Savior, the one they're depending on to be forgiven and go to heaven, trusting in his shed blood and his death, burial, and resurrection. And so, first and foremost, the choice of salvation. But then, again, for those of us who are saved, when it comes uh, to obedience uh, to God's word, the choice is ours, but the outcome will be the result of that choice. And again, our future depends on the choices which we make today. God's saying to all of us today, choose you this day whom ye will serve. And that choice again should be a no-brainer. God's people should all agree with what Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And God richly blessed Joshua right through into his old age. And let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word as we spoke about the awesome power of making the right choices. God help us, each and every one. Those who are not saved yet, may they choose the Lord Jesus to come into their heart as their own personal savior. And those of us, dear God, who are saved, let us determine in our hearts and minds that next time we're confronted with a choice, we're going to make sure it's the right choice. God help us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Maybe someone needs to come to the altar and talk to God about something maybe he spoke to you or me about. Page 281. Let's stand together and sing, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. If you need to come, you come now. me not, O oh gentle Savior, here my humble